okay so let us see the classification of protective relays so protective relays um, can be classified based on construction and uh, principle of operation as electromagnetic relays electrothermal relays moving coil type relays physico electric type relays static relays microprocessor based relays so you can see this is an electromagnetic relay electrothermal relay this is moving coil type relay this is a physico electric relay so example for physico electric relay is buckholz relay we are going to discuss it later okay so this is the buckholz relay which is connected uh, about this transformer tank in between the transformer tank and uh, this is the conservator okay so this is the relay that is connected in between the transformer tank and the conservator buckholz relay and uh, this is the static relay this is microprocessor based relay so you can further classify this uh, protective relays based on their function okay so based on the function relays can be classified as main relays auxiliary or supplementary relays or signal relays now based on the connection of sensing device relays are classified as primary relays and secondary relays so based on the actuating quantity relays are classified as voltage relays if the actuating quantity is voltage then voltage relay actuating quantity is current then current relay power relay reactance relay impedance relay and frequency relays okay i have some images here so it uh, okay this is a voltage relay this is a current relay power relay you can see here if you if you are able to read you can see this is power relay it is written here this is a reactance relay this is an impedance relay this is a frequency relay you can if you are able to read here you can see frequency relay it is written here so based on the applications relays can be classified as over voltage over current and over power relays under voltage under current and under power relays directional or reverse current relays directional or reverse power relays differential relays and distance relays so this is a directional or reverse current relay this is a directional or reverse power relay you can see a reverse power relay it is written on this relay and this is a differential relay if you are able to read here you can read differential relay type okay this is a distance relay distance protection relay it is written here okay based on the timing characteristics relays are classified as instantaneous relays definite time lag relays inverse time lag relays inverse definite minimum time lag relays okay this is an instantaneous relay this is an definite time lag relay you can read here definite time relay this is an inverse time lag relay this is an inverse definite minimum time lag relay okay so idmt we will call it as idmt relay okay so it's an idmt over current relay idmt means inverse definite minimum time lag relay okay 
so let us uh, discuss some relays with respect to your syllabus okay so let us start with electromagnetic attraction type relays so in the electromagnetic attraction type relays there will be a relay coil of course you know in a in a relay there will be a relay coil if the relay coil is energized trip circuit is closed okay so whenever relay coil is energized trip circuit will be closed that you people already know okay so in the electromagnetic attraction type relay there will be a relay coil okay which will energize an electromagnet okay there will be a relay coil which will energize an electromagnet so whenever the operating current within this relay becomes very large okay magnetic field uh, will be produced in the electromagnet okay so uh, this electromagnet will attract an armature or plunger okay an armature or plunger making contact with the trip circuit when this armature or plunger makes contact with the trip circuit what will happen the trip circuit will be closed when the trip circuit is closed trip coil will be energized when the trip coil is energized circuit breaker contacts will open okay so when compared to all the other types of relays these relays are very simple relays okay electromagnetic attraction type relays are simple relays okay so in this uh, relays there will be a relay coil which will energize the electromagnet okay so when a large amount of operating current flows through the electromagnet okay magnetic field will be produced in the electromagnet this magnetic field will attract the armature or plunger towards the uh, contacts of the trip circuit so um, electromagnetic attraction type relays can be classified as attracted armature type solenoid type balanced beam type okay Attra electromagnetic attraction type relays can be further classified as attracted armature type electromagnetic attraction relay solenoid type electromagnetic attraction relay balanced beam type electromagnetic attraction relay okay so this uh, attracted armature type relay it has two types of constructions okay it has two types of construction one is hinged armature type construction another one is polarized moving iron type construction okay so attracted armature type relay has two types of constructions one is hinged armature type construction another one is polarized moving iron type construction so you can see here this is the hinged armature type construction this is an electromagnet to which a coil is wounded this coil is nothing but a relay coil okay so this is the armature okay this is the armature and uh, we can say this is a moving contact of this uh, this armature you can call this as armature this whole um, is along with the moving contact this whole um, structure you can call it as the armature okay so this is the trip circuit okay and similarly uh, you can see here this is a polarized moving iron type okay so in this also uh, this is the coil okay it is not looking like a coil but it is similar to this okay so this is the coil which is wounded around this uh, in the central limb of this uh, electromagnet okay this is the this is the moving iron which is uh, placed on this handle and this is the trip circuit so when this moving iron comes in contact with this contact of so the trip circuit will be closed similarly when this uh, moving contact or this armature comes in contact with these contacts the trip circuit is closed i have uh, one more image for this um, yeah you can see here this is the uh, moving armature we can say and uh, this is the moving contacts these are the fixed contacts and uh, similarly this is polarized type uh, these are this is the moving iron when it comes in contact with this trip circuit trip circuit will be closed this is the coil you can see here in this image you can see the coil clearly okay now let us discuss the operation of um, these uh, hinged armature type and uh, polarized moving iron type operation is same construction is somewhat different but its operation is same both the, both have the same operation 
okay so we have seen two images here okay so the electromagnet this is the electromagnet so the electromagnet uh, of this um, attracted armature type these two are what these two are attracted armature type hinged armature type and polarized uh, moving iron type are attracted armature type both are same okay so in um, so in this um, attracted armature type uh, electromagnetic uh, relay the uh, core of this electromagnet is uh, made with laminations okay so this is made up of it is the it is an uh, laminated electromagnet which is carrying a relay coil okay so whenever it is mentioned coil that coil is nothing but the relay coil okay so the armature we can call this whole uh, structure as armature or only this one as armature and this as the moving content you can call it or we can call this as the armature so the armature and this uh, moving iron okay okay are subjected to magnetic force produced by the operating quantity what is the operating quantity here operating quantity is the voltage or current okay this voltage or current are the operating quantities so when current or voltage when uh, supply voltage is given to this coil or when current is flowing through this coil what will happen these electromagnets will get uh, magnetized magnetic field will be produced in these electromagnetic electromagnets okay so now under normal operating condition okay this armature is balanced by a counterweight okay a counterweight is provided here so it is balanced by a counterweight and carries a pair of spring contact fingers at its free end okay it carries a pair of spring contact fingers at its free end which will produce uh, the re required restraining force okay so this spring will produce the required restraining force that restraining force will not allow this armature to come in contact with this fixed contacts of the fixed circuit okay so this moving contacts won't be able to come in contact with the fixed contacts of this uh, trip circuit because of the restraining force uh, exerted by this spring okay uh, or we can say counterbalance so the operating quantity this operating on voltage or current the operating quantity uh, under normal operating condition is such that the counterweight okay what our counterweight is uh, provided to this armature will hold the armature in position okay the counterweight will hold this armature in position and the armature is not attracted towards the poles of the magnet okay so this armature is not attracted towards the poles of this magnet this is a this is a pole of the self magnets when it is gets when it gets attracted towards the pole of this magnet what will happen this moving contact will come in contact with this uh, fixed contacts of the fixed circuit okay so under normal operating condition the operating quantity is such that the counterweight will hold this armature in position and the armature is not attracted to the pole of the magnet now this is the normal operating condition now under abnormal condition okay under abnormal condition whenever fault occurs the current through this relay coil will be uh, will increase to a very high value okay current through this relay coil will increase to a very high value and um, and when cur uh, current has increased to very high value the armature is subjected to magnetic force produced by it okay so you can see here okay so when a current through this coil exceeds to certain uh, to exceed some preset value we can say okay it exceeds some preset value okay what will happen the armature is subjected to magnetic force produced by it okay hence you can see the magnetic flux lines here okay so because of that uh, the armature will be uh, attracted towards this electromagnet pole okay so the force produced okay the force of attraction um towards this pole of this armature will be proportional to square of the current okay square of the current that is flowing through this coil okay relay coil okay so the force electromagnetic force okay or the operating force okay which is causing this armature to move towards this uh, pole of this electromagnet it will be proportional to square of the current flowing through this coil 
okay and this um, these electromagnetic relays they can be either ac uh, they can operate on ac supply or dc supply okay the supply that is given to them they can be that can be ac or dc okay so when current flows through this uh, coil and uh, the current increases beyond the limit under fault condition what will what will happen this armature gets attracted towards this pole and uh, because of the magnetic force armature uh, makes contact with the fixed contacts of the trip circuit and what will happen whenever this armature makes contact with the fixed contacts of the trip circuit what will happen the trip circuit is closed when the trip circuit is closed what will happen circuit breaker opens will i'm sorry circuit breaker contacts will open so the minimum current at which okay the minimum current in this uh, relay coil at which armature gets attracted to close this trip circuit is called as pickup current okay so the minimum current at which armature gets attracted towards this trip circuit is called pickup current okay so we can even provide tappings to this relay coil okay we can provide tapping to this relay coil and okay um, and uh, the operating speed can be as small as 0.5 milliseconds okay the operating speed of these relays can be as small as 0.5 millisecond and uh, this uh, current with respect to time characteristics of uh, such relays will be a uh, hyperbolic in nature okay so this is the operating um, current uh, with respect to the operating time in milliseconds okay this is operating time in milliseconds so this is the current setting okay so the current with respect to time characteristics of this relay will have i uh, will have uh, hyperbolic characteristics okay so this is about uh, the attracted armature type i hope you have understood the operation it's very simple operation okay so attracted armature type is hinged armature type and polarized moving iron type so next one is what solenoid type okay solenoid type and we can even call it as plunger type relay okay solenoid type relay or plunger type relay we can call it as so this also uh, works on the principle of electromagnetic attraction okay uh, this uh, solenoid type relay works on the principle of electromagnetic attraction so it consists of a solenoid which is nothing but an electromagnet okay it consists of this is a solenoid okay so this it consists of a solenoid which is nothing but an electromagnet okay and it also consists of a moving iron plunger okay so this is you can see here this is the moving iron plunger this is it okay i have written here movable iron plunger this it consists of a moving iron plunger so now uh, this is our trip circuit okay so uh, i can say this is my moving contact and this uh, dark uh, boxes square boxes you can see they are the fixed contacts of the trip circuit and this uh, rod like thing is the moving contact okay this rod like thing horizontal uh, rod uh, like thing is the moving contact and this uh, dark boxes are the fixed contacts okay so under normal operating condition there is a spring which is connected to this uh, moving contact you can see okay spring is connected to this moving contact so under normal operating condition the current through the relay coil okay this is our relay coil okay so under normal operating condition the current through the um relay coil is not sufficient enough okay to pull this um, movable iron plunger towards the 
uh, into the electromagnet okay so if uh, this uh, moving uh, movable iron plunger is pulled into this electromagnet uh, then this moving contact will come in contact with these two fixed contacts okay so under normal opting condition the spring will hold the restraining force is more than the operating force under normal opting condition the restraining force is given by the spring okay it is holding this um, moving contact or this movable iron plunger in position okay so this moving contact won't be able to make contact with this strip circuit contacts okay so when our abnormal condition occurs that is fault occurs current through this relay coil okay current through this relay coil will increase and becomes more than the pickup value okay current through this relay coil will increase and it becomes more than the pickup value so what will happen whenever when the current becomes more than the pickup value so i have already told you pickup value is the current at which the relay will operate okay the relay when uh, the relay means the moving contact of the relay comes in contact with the minimum current at which okay pickup current is the uh, pickup value is the minimum current at which the relay will uh, the relay moving contacts will be able to come in contact with the fixed contacts okay that is the pickup current so under faulty condition when our fault occurs when the current through the relay coil increases and becomes more than the pickup value the solenoid draws this plunger upwards okay the solenoid will draw this plunger upwards when it draws the plunger upwards means operating force becomes greater than the restraining force exerted by the spring so this moving contact will come in contact with this fixed contact so what will happen the trip circuit is closed when the trip circuit is closed trip coil is energized when the trip coil is energized circuit breaker contacts are open okay so this is about the operation of the uh, solenoid type or plunger type relay next is balanced beam type relay okay so this balanced beam type relay it is also an electromagnetic relay okay it uh, consists of um, a beam carrying two electromagnet at its end so this is the beam okay this is the beam okay which is having uh, there will be two electromagnet at its ends okay so have one more image this is the beam which is having two electromagnet at its ends okay so to one electromagnet uh, coil uh, that is wounded is known as restraining coil to another electromagnet the coil that is wounded you can call it as operating coil okay so so one electromagnet this electromagnet to which this operating coil is um, wounded okay it will produce operating torque and uh, this uh, uh, electromagnet to which this restraining coil is wounded this electromagnet will produce restraining torque okay so this electromagnet uh, on this end is producing restraining torque this electromagnet on this uh, end is producing operating torque okay so here two torques are there one is operating torque and the other one is restraining torque okay so beam is supported at the middle okay this beam is supported at the middle so under normal operating condition the operating torque will be equal to the restraining torque okay so the operating torque will be equal to the restraining torque when the operating torque is equal to the restraining torque beam will be balanced okay beam will not um, tilt towards either restraining coil electromagnet or operating coil electromagnet it will not tilt on either way okay it will be balanced okay so when the beam is balanced the moving contact will be away from the fi fixed contacts of the trip circuit okay so the moving contact will be away from the fixed contacts of the trip circuit that is under normal operating condition so the beam will be balanced and it will be in horizontal position okay it will be in horizontal position so now under abnormal condition when our fault occurs okay so the operating current the current in the operating coil will become greater than the current in the restraining coil okay fault current will flow through this operating coil okay so when the fault current flows through this operating coil how the fault current flows through the operating coil we will discuss in detail in the case, in the uh, 
a last unit in the case of protection okay so from now onwards from this unit onwards uh, we will be discussing um, mostly about the relays only okay so um, the current in this operating coil will, will become greater than the current in the restraining coil so the operating torque will become greater than the restraining torque okay so when the operating torque becomes greater than the restraining torque the beam will bend towards the uh, operating the electromagnet in which operating uh, torque is there okay so okay so it will deflect uh, towards this operating side okay so when this beam deflects towards this operating side okay what will happen this moving contact will come in contact with this fixed contact so when the moving contact comes in contact with the fixed contact what will happen the trip circuit is closed when the trip circuit is closed um the trip coil is energized when the trip coil is energized circuit breaker contacts are open okay so this is a fast and a robust operation okay so generally only one cycle is enough for this operation and uh, but due to dc transients it is not accurate okay this balanced beam type relay will not give will not uh, have accurate operation okay due to dc transients okay so, and this uh, balanced beam type relays are not used nowadays okay this is the operation of our balanced beam type relay okay so now let us discuss the operating principle of this electromagnetic attraction type relay so we have seen uh, three types of electromagnetic attraction type relays okay so those three types are attracted armature type solenoid type balanced beam type okay so three types of electromagnetic attraction type relays i have discussed just now attracted armature type solenoid type and balanced beam type so let us see the operating principle of the attracted armature type all these relays which we have discussed okay so in all these um, uh, relays the electromagnetic force was produced due to the operating quantity the operating quantity is either voltage or current and that is flowing through this uh, relay coil okay and uh, this uh, operating quantity will um, this uh, means where uh, the uh, electromagnetic force that is produced due to the operating quantity will exert um a force uh, means attraction of force attractive force of this um, on the armature or moving iron or plunger okay and this electromagnetic force is proportional to the square of the flux in the air gap okay the electromagnetic force that is produced due to the operating quantity in these three electromagnets a magnetic relays that we have discussed okay uh, that uh, electromagnetic force is proportional to square of the flux in the air gap okay if you are able to neglect the saturation effect then this force will be proportional to square of the operating current okay since this electromagnetic force is proportional to square of the electromagnetic uh, square of the uh, um, operating current these relays can be used for either ac or dc systems okay so let us uh, first uh, discuss about this dc operation okay so in dc operation the electromagnetic force will be constant so whenever this electromagnetic force exceeds the restraining force the relay will operate okay so let us assume fe is the electromagnetic force so which is proportional to square of the current if you remove the proportionality uh, you just replace the proportionality by a constant k1 okay so i is the operating current in the relay coil okay now uh, let us assume the restraining force due to which uh, the spring is able to hold this uh, armature or plunger or the beam in position is the um, is fr so fr is restraining force is constant okay so it will not vary with respect to current it will remain constant so uh, so fr is equal to k2 okay f is equal to electromagnetic force this is our restraining force electromagnetic force is equal to k1 i square and uh, fr is equal to k2 so so on the verge of relay operation 
okay so the uh, the electromagnetic force is just equal to the restraining force okay on the verge of relay operation the electromagnetic force will be just equal to the restraining force when the electromagnetic force is equal to restraining force k1 i square is equal to k2 okay fe is equal to fr fe is equal to fr means k1 i square is equal to k2 so i square is equal to what k2 by k1 i is equal to root of k2 by k1 which is nothing but constant so this is the this i value is the current at which relay operates in the case of dc operation okay this is the current i is the current at which relay will operate in the case of dc operation let us go to the ac operation okay so in uh, in uh, ac electromagnetic uh, type relays the um, electromagnetic force will be proportional to the square of the operating current so f is proportional to i square so f is proportional to i square means you can remove the uh, proportionality and you can write f is equal to k1 i square or i is i am sin omega t okay so you uh, so f is equal to k1 into i am sin omega t whole square if you just uh, expand this expression you will get f is equal to 1 by 2 k1 i am square minus 1 by 2 k1 i am square cos 2 omega t you will get okay so you have you are having this is our electromagnetic force electromagnetic force has two components here one is 1 by 2 k1 i am square another component is 1 by 2 k1 i am square cos 2 omega t okay so this first component that is uh, i 1 by 2 k1 i am square is a constant component and it is independent of time isn't it by looking at this expression itself you can tell so it is a constant component and it is independent of time similarly this um, 1 by 2 k1 1 by 2 k1 i am square cos 2 omega t it is a dependent component uh, which is depending on time okay it is depending on time and it pulsates at double the uh, supply frequency okay so this component will pulsate at double the supply frequency okay hence the total electromagnetic force will pulsate this fe the total electromagnetic force will pulsate at double the supply frequency and of course the restraining force is constant similar to your previous case okay similar to your dc uh, case okay it is constant fr is equal to k2 okay it will not change even if it is uh, if the even if the system is ac system the restraining force will remain same okay this restraining force is produced by what spring that is connected to the armature or plunger okay so since the restraining force is constant and the electromagnetic force is uh, fluctuating okay it is fluctuating um, i mean uh, uh, yeah it is pul pulsating at double at double the uh, supply frequency okay what will happen is the armature of the relay will be picked up at a time you can see in this image at time t1 and it will be dropped at time t2 okay so the armature of the relay will be picked up at t1 okay and it will be dropped at t2 okay so the electromagnetic force is pulsating okay so the electromagnetic force you can see here it is pulsating and the relay armature will vibrate at double the power supply frequency this is the normal supply current you can see here okay the relay armature will vibrate at double the power supply frequency and this will cause noise and damage to the relay contacts okay if the if the armature is vibrating armature means what okay what is our armature okay this is our armature so it will be uh, vibrating and double the uh, uh, power supply frequency it will cause noise and it may even damage the relay contacts okay so this leads to sparking and unreliable operation okay so in order to overcome this air gap flux producing an electromagnetic force is divided into two fluxes okay what is the air gap flux this is the air gap flux okay this is the this flux in between this armature and this uh, electromagnetic pole is the air gap flux this flux is divided into two components okay this flux is divided into two fluxes 
okay acting simultaneously but differing in their time phase okay these two fluxes okay are acting simultaneously but they are differing in time uh, in time phase okay so this will cause resulting electromagnetic force to be almost positive one constant okay so if we are able to uh, divide this uh, flux in the air gap into two fluxes with time phase difference okay then the electromagnetic force uh, will be positive one constant okay so this can be achieved either by providing uh, two windings in the electromagnet okay here we have only one winding instead of one winding we can use two windings in the electromagnet having phase shift network uh, by with the help of uh, phase shift network or by putting a shaded ring on the pole of the electromagnet okay so i have put a shaded this is a shaded ring don't i have any other image i have i am showing you only one image here okay so this is known as shaded ring you can see a rectangular box here this is known as shaded ring so this uh, by putting a shaded ring here okay so the fluxes that are induced in between in this pole and this pole will have a phase shift okay in order to provide phase shift between these two, the two fluxes that are produced in between these two poles actually it was a single pole earlier okay if you remember okay it was a single pole now we have we want two fluxes since we want two fluxes we have uh, we have divided it into two poles and to one pole we have given a uh, we are we are wounded it by a shaded ring this rectangular box is a shaded ring okay on one of the poles of this electromagnet okay so the flux through this shaded pole will lag the flux that is produced okay this dotted line what you can see is the flux okay so the flux which is uh, moving through this shaded pole will lag behind the flux in this pole okay unshaded part this is unshaded part this is our shaded part okay so this this is known as shaded ring okay so the flux through the shaded uh, part will be lagging unshaded part flux by by some phase angle okay so the phase lag between phase lag between these two um, components of fluxes okay the phi 1 phi 2 let us assume phi 2 is lagging phi 1 by some angle alpha okay so the phase lag between these two components of fluxes can be easily produced using this uh, shaded ring the flux through this shaded pole will lag this by uh, by will lag uh, by an angle of alpha beta whatever phase angle by some theta okay with respect to this unshaded part okay so let us see some advantages so this type of electromagnetic um, relays can be used for both for ac and dc okay they have fast uh, operation and they can easily reset fast okay and they are instantaneous relays okay and uh, they are they have high operating speed with respect to time okay uh, the pickup can be as high as 90 to 95% of dc operation and 60 to 90% uh, for i think uh, ac operation okay modern relays are compact simple reliable and robust okay so disadvantages are directional feature is absent in this okay so what is meant by directional relay we'll discuss later on okay so it is a it is a very fast in operation okay so so this fast operation will affect the transients okay as transients contain dc as well as pulsating components under steady state value less than the set value the relay can operate only uh, operate during transients okay so even during transients also it operates that's why it is an disadvantage okay so the production of applications are production for various ac and dc equipments can be provided by using this electromagnetic relays under uh, over current and under current and over voltage and under uh, voltage protection can be provided for both ac and dc equipments in the power system in the definite time lag over current and earth fall protection also uh, we can use this relays electromagnetic uh, relays 
uh, it can be used for differential protection and um, they are used as auxiliary relays in contact systems for protecting relaying schemes 